on economic justice, that's, that's of no concern. So pretending efficiency is the only goal, you know, is one reason that people don't like to hear the word. Hearing efficiency <coughs> equated with, oh, profitability and efficiency, those are the same things. Well, that's just dead wrong. That's actually bad economics. But it happens all the time. It's done all the time. Efficiency just means, wait a minute, are people going to feel good if the economy, if, if when we go out there and work at tasks that are, you know, to some degree unpleasurable, that our work is just wasted? I mean, who would like that? Are people going to be happy if scarce social productive resources are used in ways that aren't efficient in the sense that it gets used to do this when it would have been much more valuable if it had been used to do that? Well, that's what efficiency really means. And when you understand that's what efficiency means, then that's something you want out of your economy. You want an economy that will achieve that. Um, and we said we want that. We want all of that, and we'd like to achieve a variety of outcomes. We'd like to achieve a variety of economic lifestyles. I mean, if we could achieve it, if you can design an economy to do all that, that's what we should be looking for. So we started with those goals, and we said, well, is there a way to do that? And here's the institutions, the major institutions that sort of define a participatory economy, or the idea of we can organize our economic activities in a way that's totally different from just the economics of competition and greed. We really can engage in a system of equitable cooperation. It is not impossible. Don't let them tell you so. Don't, don't fall for the TINA defense of settling for something that's far less than what we should than, than what we have to settle for. The, um, the major features of a participatory economy are workers' councils, in which everybody who works someplace is a member of the worker council, everybody has one vote, everybody has full rights. And the workers' council is the ultimate decision-making body for the workplace. Whatever the workers' council decides, that's what the workplace does. Um, just as the stockholders meeting is ultimately sovereign in a limited liability corporation, where the stockholders can, if they wish, come and vote as many times as shares of stock they have, none of them working there, of course. Um, the Workers' Council is, is sovereign in a participatory economy. Um, we also, <coughs> the system also has something called consumer councils, and I, I'll call them neighborhood consumer councils so you have some idea of what we're talking about. Um, second, the, the second major institution you know, in a participatory economy is the system for, for how it is that people are going to be remunerated for their work. And the proposal is that workers in their councils would decide amongst themselves according to whatever procedures they decide to set up to do so. If they think there are differences in effort and sacrifice that, that, that they are making amongst themselves, then they basically, they basically go ahead and, and, and tell, that they make that choice, they make that call. So one way you can think about it is, well, the workers' councils would set up effort rating committees. <coughs> How they do it, what information they collect, what their procedures are, it's up to them. But basically the recommendation is if you think, if you, <coughs> if you think that there are some, some noticeable, noti if you think there are differences in effort and sacrifices amongst you that you want to take into account and believe should be taken into account when people have consumption rights, then go ahead and do that and do it the way you want to. So we call that remuneration according to effort. Um, third feature is that that's something that we can talk a lot about. Um, that's something that in the 20 years since this proposal has been out there and sort of discussed and battered around, that's something that a lot of people have had comments about, complaints about, criticisms, et cetera. So it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting subject for conversation. Um, third feature is uh, <coughs> balancing jobs for empowerment and desirability. Um, what's that mean? Well, if you think about the way jobs work in most workplaces, um, there's a relatively small number of jobs in most workplaces where the tasks that the person who has that job carries out, there's a small number of jobs where the tasks are 
pretty much all desirable or less undesirable than most tasks in the worst place, and what I would call empowering. You're, going to, you're spending your time going to a meeting that's talking about maybe we should have a new product. You're going to your time going to a meeting talking about maybe we should you know, change the way the work is organized in this part of the factory. Those are empowering tasks, empowering in the sense that if you go to meetings like that, if that's part of your job description, if you have tasks like that, they're going to put you in a position where you are both more knowledgeable and likely to have ideas about how it is that the workplace should be run. Um, most of the jobs in most workplaces have very few, if any, empowering tasks and basically have all the undesirable jobs. So one way of thinking about that is in most economies, when you look inside a workplace, jobs are very unbalanced. They're unbalanced for empowerment. Some people have a lot of empowering tasks. A, f a relatively few number of people have a lot of empowering tasks and most people have no empowering tasks. A relatively few people have most of the desirable tasks and most, of the peop and most people have all the undesirable tasks. That's the way it works. Well, is that what you want? We're designing a desirable economy. Does that seem fair? And if what you want to do is encourage people and give them the ability to participate in economic decision making, do you really want to leave the workplace with jobs so badly unbalanced as they have been for hundreds of years regard, you know, with regard to, to, to empowering tasks? So we basically said this. You can, give worker, you can give every worker one vote in the worker council. And what that gives is, so everybody has the for, everybody formally has an equal right to participate in decision making in the workplace. But if you have some people who are sweeping floors 40 hours a week and doing nothing else, and you have a few people who are going to these sort of meetings and thinking about how to change things, is it realistic to say that everybody is at an equal opportunity to participate in the, in the, in, in the workplace decision? Our answer is no. And our answer is, and you don't have to put up with that. Um, but that is what will happen if you're not, if you take, if you don't take some care to try and balance jobs to some extent. Now, what the proposal actually is, is the rec it's a recommendation. It says workplaces, you should probably set up another committee that tries to e reorganize sort of jobs and the assignment of tasks with these two sort of ideas in mind. But of course you want to do it in a way that's practical. You have to do it in a way that takes into account what people can and can't do. You're certainly not going to have people who never were trained to be surgeons performing surgery in a hospital. Nobody's ever said that. Nobody's ever recommended that. Not everybody can do everything. That isn't the point. And the point is also not that we said somebody should come in from the outside and sort of do all these job jiggling things around? No. We're basically saying that that's, it's up to the workers in the workplace. They do it however they want to. Um, now the last sort of basic feature of a participatory economy is, oh, it's not a market system and it's not a system of central planning or authoritarian planning. So what is it? Well, broadly speaking, it falls into the other category. The other category is democratic planning. But democratic planning is a very broad and general name for not authoritarian planning, not markets. And there are a lot of different versions of democratic planning. And we're proposing a very particular <coughs> version, and it's actually a very unique version. It is remarkably different from most conceptions of what it is somebody is imagining when they say, I don't want markets, I don't want authoritarian planning, I want democratic planning. Now let's just try this out, and I'm about done. This will sort of take us to the plate where we can talk about any part of this that, that anybody wants to bring up. Um, if I say, Democrat, if, if I say, look, <coughs> how are we going to go about coming up with a plan for what the economy is going to do this year in a democratic way? We've got these workers' councils, and we've got these neighborhood consumption councils, and we're going to have democracy within all these councils. That's easy. Everybody's thought that through before. Um, how are we going to come up with a plan in a democratic way? Because what one factory does has to somehow